Hello, it's me, and you see in front of you some of my favorite kind of puzzles. These are the platonic solids. But it's more than just a platonic solid, they're circle puzzles. So another, one way to make a really great series of puzzles better is to make circles in them. Because I've always been fascinated by that, especially the ones that are stationary. Because they're like puzzles within puzzles. So here's the um, pyramidal version of it, pyramid version of it. This is the tetrahedral. Here's the hexahedral. This is something you've seen before, many times I guess, the circle 3x3. Three three. This is the octahedron, another platonic solid with uh, stationary circles at all levels. And uh, then you've got, got of course the Megaminx. And now the crown fitting, the crown achievement, which is the circle icosahedron. This is a masterful creation made by Raphael and it has circles on every face and each and every one of them are stationary. Now it's true there are different planetary versions. This would be incredibly complex to have different planetary versions. And yeah, it does increase the challenge, but to be honest with you, I'm really just enjoying the aesthetics of the collection. If I had different planetary versions, I'd have a whole lot of puzzles that uh, look exactly the same. So I'm very happy and very content just to have the pure circle puzzles with this. Um, just as honorable mentions, there's this guy over here, a fantastic face-turning circle rhombic dodecahedron. So this is in the vein of these guys over here, the um, um, Eitan Star. So this is a circle version of the Eitan Star, but not exactly, because this has an extra piece, and that's this, this edge piece. So in that way, it's more like the Icosiax, which is another version of the face-turning Icosahedron. So how do I approach a beast like this? Well, in many ways, it's just like the uh, Eitan Star, just with more pieces. So what I like to do is go through possible algorithms. See if I can generate algorithms that might help guide me through this this puzzle. And I'm going to use algorithms based upon what I know from the Eitan star and see how it affects the center. Some of them might affect the center, some of them might not. So let's see what happens if I just do a simple combination of moves like down, down, up, up, right? To get it back, I simply go down, down, up, up, starting from this side. But before I do that, I look for what I call a middle move. A middle move is something, after you do a commutator, before you reverse the commutator, kind of do a middle move with an isolated piece. And I can see that this center right here, right in the center, is completely isolated. So if I just do, this is isolated as well. So if I just do a move like this, because nothing else is, is affected by that uh, commutator, I'll do a middle move, bring that over here. Um, then what I do is I reverse it. I go down, down, up, up, and then I bring it back. So what that did is that brought this to here, this to here, and this to here. So now I have at least a three cycle for the centers, and I can move that all around the puzzle. Okay, to bring it back, I'll just move this up here. So I'll go down, down, oopsie. Up, up, and we bring this back down here, and down, down, up, up. Okay, so that's one thing that I can do. Uh, the other thing is I know that I can get these guys, when I went like down, down, up, up, I can see in terms of what move these guys around. So this move to here, yeah, this move to here, this move to here, and this move to here. So these um, pieces over here, the outer shell central areas, can be cycled by itself. It moves everything else, but that may be one of the first movements that I do, kind of like uh, I did with this. I know that this move to here, this move to here, and this move to here, as I recall. This does the same thing, but you can see I'm affecting the middle areas here as well. So that might be one of the first things that I do, because it'll only affect those. Uh, it'll affect these, but it'll affect everything else too. So I may just do these moves first to get these guys in, and then solve everything later if I can isolate it. And I know that the center could be among the last things that I do. Well, here's another thing that I did. If I wanted to move these little pieces here, I had an algorithm that moved this to here, this to here, and this to here. So let's go ahead and see what that does in terms of the center. And what this did to move this to here, this to here, and this to here, is I, I took this piece and I moved this down. Actually, let me try a different center here. It might be easier to see. 
So hold this here. I move this down. Then I did down, down, up, up. Then I move this up. And I did it again. Down, down, up, up. Then I moved it back down. And then again, down, down, up, up. Then I moved it back up for the last time and went down, down, up, up. Okay, so that did indeed, this moved to here, this moved to here, this moved to here. But what's interesting is all the other things that happened too. Um, these guys are exactly the same, but this went to here, uh, where? This went to here, this went to here, and this went to here. So that algorithm did to the inner portion what the original down, down, up, up did to the outer portion. Now the problem is, is I can't just use that algorithm to move these guys. Uh, I could, but it's going to affect the centers too. So unless there's a way to move one of these guys without moving these guys over here, or a way to move these guys without moving this, I'm not going to use the same algorithm for two different types of pieces. So I'm going to say, in terms of my central pieces, I know how to move the center. I now know how to move these guys. So I'm not going to use that algorithm to move these. I'm going to use it to move these. So how do I isolate these pieces? Well, here's something that's interesting that I notice. At the end of the algorithm, this piece is isolated. If this is isolated, then I can maybe three cycle this. So at the end of all my down, down, up, ups, and all of that, I'm just going to take this because it's isolated and let's just move a piece here. Boom. If I undo what I just did, I'll put this back. So how am I going to undo it? Well, what if I moved on the opposite way? To undo it means moving these guys back. So this to here, this to here, and this to here, and then move it back. So instead of starting here and moving it down, I'll do exactly the same algorithm and move it from here. That should get these guys back over here and only affecting these pieces here. So the second part, so that entire algorithm that I did was the first quote commutator part. This will now be the middle move, so I'm gonna move it down like so. And now let's undo that original algorithm. So I'm starting here. We'll go down, 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 up, up, then up, down, down, up, up. Once again, down, 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 up, up, and finally up, down, down, up, up. And, sh and then I'm gonna take that middle move and simply move it back. So now I have another way of moving these guys around, independent of the previous algorithm, where this went to here, this went to here, no, it may be hard to see, and this went to here. Now I have to look at the orientation. When this went to here, it was as though I turned this down here, so that's easy to see. In terms of this orientation, this went to here, as though I just went like this. And when this went up to here, this orange one at the very bottom went to the very top. So now I have an algorithm that independently moves these guys, and that can even be the last step. So now I can independently move these centers, I can independently move these guys. I can move these guys while at the same time moving this, but we don't care now because now I can isolate these. And I can move these over here. So uh, just to get this into muscle memory, the entire algorithm will go something like this. Down, 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 up, up, up. Down, down, up, up, down down, down, up, up, and up, down, down, up, up, okay? This is isolated, so I'm going to move this down like so, boom, and I would just do the opposite, starting from here, down, 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 Up, up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, and finally up, 
down, down, up, up, and middle move comes back down to here. Okay, so now the final move, this will go here, this will go here, and this will come up here, or this blue will be up here. So, so that's, that's okay. Um, we've, we've got that solved. Down, 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 up, up, and up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, and up, down, down, up, up, okay? We do our middle move right here. And now we finish it up. Down, 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 up, 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 down, down, up, up, down, down, down. Up, and up, down, down, up, up, and this comes back. So now we have a nice three cycle. Now you may think, boy, that's a lot of movements just to move these guys around. And it is, but it doesn't mean I have to use algorithms with the entire saw, but I have a way out. Now the final algorithm was a way to move these corners around. And as I recall, it was pretty much just a sliding U technique. This went to here, this went to here, this went to here, I believe. So let's see how the sliding U technique affects the centers. So we'll move this up here, do a R, slide the U to over here, to a U, do an LI, mm. LI, UI, RI, L, I uh, UI rather, and L. Okay, and I believe this slides back. Okay, so taking a look at what we did, this cleanly went to here, this went to here, and this went to here. In terms of everything else, nothing else was affected except these pieces over here, but I already have a way of moving these pieces. So now I know I can move these corners in without affecting anything else. So this won't be among the last moves that I'll do. This will be among the more middle moves once I get all these solved. So once again, let's move this. R. U, I. L, I. U, R, I. U, I. L, U. Okay, do it one more time, but this time naming the moves correctly. R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, and L, and U. Okay, so I guess the order of things that I'm going to do is I'm going to put these pieces in first, I suppose. Then what I'm going to do is work on the centers, where I'm going to put these pieces in and then the center. Now, what about these guys? Well, something that I would notice is I don't think these guys scramble. I think because of the nature of this, um, this can certainly turn to here, but it can't turn anywhere else. I, I can never move it out of this plane. I don't think there's a move that I can do that. So I'm, I think that these will just end up trivially turning back where they're supposed to go. So I think these will come in just fine. Then I can move um, these guys in. Then I can move these guys in. Then I have a choice of moving this as the final, final move. The other thing is these edges here. Now these edges, what I notice with circle puzzles is sometimes there are puzzles that are attached, pieces that are attached to other pieces when it comes to circle puzzles. For instance, um, these pieces here 
are uh, have a no, these pieces here have a correlation with these edges. So sometimes they automatically come in, and I'm not really sure how to put those in. I can try to find an algorithm, but I'm noticing that I don't know that this is ever not in association with one of these two. So now I've pulled this away from here. I can pull it away from here too. And it seems to always be um, in line with these guys. So maybe you don't have to worry about those. I'm not going to worry about them quite yet. So I think I probably have enough to go on to go ahead and scramble the puzzle. These are slightly mysteries, so I may want to think about what I need to do to solve that, but I think maybe we've got enough to actually scramble the puzzle. Uh, now also bear in mind that it doesn't just scramble, it also, based on its structure, it can do something like this. It can jumble. And jumbling is a whole other issue because I'm now separating components of the center out. So this is a fascinating part of it. I don't worry about jumbling too much. It's just sort of a way to get things started. Now I'm going to think about what to do with these edges if I had a way of dealing with this. So actually, if I were to try to get these corners, I'm going to borrow an algorithm that I believe I used with these corners. And that's going to simply be R U R I UI. So let's see what that does. It didn't change any of my centers, but this edge, well, let's see what happened. This edge went to here, this edge went to here, and this edge went to here. Okay, so this to here, this to here, this to here. So this slid over here, this slid over here, and once again, these two kind of swapped. So this went all the way down here. Um, okay, and what else was affected? The only other things was the corners, which you don't care about, and these, which you don't care about. This was also affected. So that could be some something problematic. But when we move these guys with our down, down, up, up, these were not affected, I think. Let's get this back. U, R, U, I, R, I. But when we did our down, down, up, up. Uh, none of the edges were affected. Okay, that's good. Down. Down. And that tells me that the edges are going to have to be put in before I put these in. So I think the order of things are going to be to put these guys in just by positioning. We can then we can then put these in by that algorithm. R U R U I. After that, we can then put these guys in over here. Then after that, we can put these in. And if we want, we can then put these in. We can then independently put these in and then, and then the corners. So that, I think, is going to be the order of things. And the original reason why I started making these videos is to kind of document my thought process. So that's I'm kind of being old school with that. But anyway, that's the blueprint. Those are the algorithms that, that I can use. And the rest is all a matter of application. So once again, I'm first going to put in these over here by positioning. The next thing I'm going to put in are these corners, which will be guided by these central areas here. The next thing is I'm going to put in these outer pieces over here by the down, down, up, up. This will be with the R, U, R, I, U, I, by the way. Then I'm going to put these in by doing our down, down, up, up with the extended, with the extended algorithm. Uh, I, I can then put this in with down, down, up, up by doing a commutator version of it. And then I can put in these here with the higher extended algorithm. Well, no. Then I put in the corners with the sliding U technique. And then I put in these as a final one with that long, long algorithm. So I think that's what we're going to do. So we might as well just go ahead and scramble it. I've been staring at this for some time. And I think I have all what I need to attempt it. So the first kind of a scramble is going to be just the general non-jumbling type scramble. Move this here. Now, like I say, these are marathon scrambles. This is something that you do if you're on a 12-hour plane ride to some foreign country. Yeah, 
turn, turn, turn. Okay, once I think I've done this enough, we can start with some jumbling, but let's get this more scrambled. Like this. All right, this looks a little too homogenous here. So we're gonna to wanna to separate these guys out. Now to those who may have not seen this puzzle, you've probably never seen this guy scrambled like this. There we go, separate this out from here. Turn here. So the kind of solve this is, is this is what I would call a sequential solve. Some solves are done by reduction, where you turn it into a simpler puzzle. Some are done sequentially, because this is actually the simplest layer of its form, the icosahedron. There's no way to reduce it, so we do it sequentially by putting in various pieces. Other types of solves are layer by layer, like the 3 by 3 or even the pyraminx, or even this guy over here. So these two are layer by layer. This is sequential. This is kind of like a layer by layer. This is a sequential solve. So now you can see what this looks like in its fully scrambled form. Looks rather scary. Right, Jessica? Yeah, you're eating seafood. I can see the food. Thanks for enhancing the video. Make it more classy. Welcome. Okay, this goes here. And let's turn this, okay. So, we'll take a look at this as it is. So this is the scrambled version of it. So now we're gonna do jumbling. See what this looks like? Scrambled? Wow. Yeah. Well, now I'm gonna do something scary with them. Can this jumble? I think it can. Shape shift. No, we wake up early enough tomorrow, we can do French toast, but... Why do I do it? Why? Because I'm not the only one doing it. I have to mm. wake up early, you have to wake up early and suffer with me. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, so now we can shape shift this to here. Not a big fan of jumping. This goes to here. <clears throat> this goes to here. This can go here. Now look how scary it is. It's shape shifted. Wow. Impossible, you think? Almost. It looks pretty hard. Alright, there it is. A completely scrambled, shape shifted, jumbled circle echosohedron. Impossible? Probably. Just got your Bye. 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 Yeah.